Welcome back. This is Wake Up Sierra Leone here on AYV Television and Radio. Don't forget you can be a part of the program by joining us on our Facebook page. Search for AYV News. There you can drop a comment or question about the issues we're discussing and we would factor them into the conversation at some point. So this morning we have been joined in our studios by the country's Minister of Trade and Industry, Dr. Edward Inga Sandi. The minister is here to talk on his ministry's um, trade agreement signed recently. Um, the U.S.-Africa Leadership um, Summit that he, always, he also attended um, in Washington. And what are the plans for 2023 in addressing um, essential commodities and prices as well in the country? Good morning, Mr. Minister, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Ivy. Good morning. Uh, in generally, how will you assess... Um, 2022, the year under review. You know, there were a lot of um, issues. We had COVID, um, the supply chain issues, and prices in, in, in uh, commodity prices went up um, in the markets as well. What's, what's your general assessment of it? It's been difficult. I mean, we all understand how much that has meant to the ordinary Sierra Leonean. Um, it has not been very easy, even for us, navigating through those difficult challenges. But I think um, what has characterized our ability to come back and look at possible ways of addressing some of those challenges has given us the, the ability to also look forward, to prepare ahead, um, to be able to predict um, global trends and be able to see how you, you use local initiatives in, in addressing some of those global issues which all other countries are subject to. So I think um, we, we also would want to say that Sierra Leoneans have also shown strong resilience even with all these challenges. Um, I think overall you would realize that what we've been saying is, is really what um, we need to be focusing on. The, the, the over-dependence on, on other countries. We, we truly need to look at what we can structure our economy um, to and see how our people are able to produce some of the things or most of the things which they consume. We have to be part of the global trade. We should not just be on the receiving end. We should also be able to produce and export to other countries. In 2022, uh, the government announced um, you know, some tax breaks <coughs> in, in, in some essential commodities and you as an individual, as a minister, you even went out to some shops to ensure that, um, you know, these breaks or other things are enforced. But generally, people have been saying this has not been reflective on um, their income and how things are going up in the market. Uh, what has been the challenge in addressing that? Well, the, the, the concoction of um, global... Um, events, the, the, the outcome of those events are multifaceted. You take a look at what happened with the logistics chain, you take a look at what happened with the Ukraine war, um, the inability of um, Africa to be able to get um, certain products from the usual markets. You take a look at how um, the sanctions that were imposed on Russia um, and our state here that there are certain commodities that were coming from Russia that Africa was totally dependent on. Um, almost 60% of our diesel we consume on the continent was coming from Russia. And all of those sanctions that were imposed, the, 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 the rising of the interest rate in, in the United States and how it made the US dollars to strengthen against other currencies globally are all together, I mean, some of the things which really hit us. But, and part of the response of government was to see how we can do adjustments. In fact, it's having um, overall impact on the, the, the conduct of the economy. But mm. we, th we thought it was very necessary to take a look at some of the essential commodities. We're talking about, uh, of course, rice um, does not have any duty or GST. We had to take off GST on flour because it was the opinion that flour was becoming the second staple in the country. We looked at cement, which, and you know, there are a lot of constructions going on. Everybody is trying to put up a structure where they can keep their families. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we took a look at um, rots. We also tried to review the duty downwards. And we're trying to also look at other non-revenue, sorry, non-tax revenues, strengthening them to see how um, the reduction in those taxes could actually be, be, be augmented by the other non, non tax with, with the reduction of those taxes for um, such commodities, <coughs> how much of a follow-up does the ministry do to ensure that the reduction in the taxes does reflect in the price that the consumers pay to purchase these products? The, actual, the, the truth is, even as we were looking at all what we could do as interventions, prices of these commodities were going up at the international level. Um, for instance, you all saw how petroleum prices were going up when COVID was almost um, ending and how the Ukraine war also impacted on that. We all saw um, what happened to even other commodities. Energy prices were going up, so um, cost of production was going up, and all of that impacted on global prices of commodities. So you're fixing one thing here and there's something happening at the global level that is really, um, I mean, not very good. I mean, it would have been very worse if all of these interventions were not made. But the so expectation is that do, these interventions would have some sort of effect in terms of, uh, you know, the <coughs> sorry, the transaction between the consumers and the traders. You don't want a situation where People come and then they get the tax uh, reduction for certain commodities, but then they still go back and sell at a price as if the tax was not reduced. So it comes back to how do you monitor it to ensure that it's reflective so the businesses don't gain twice? I agree with you. Um, I think we have done that very, very efficiently. We have our price monitoring of commodities at various levels. When the importers bring their goods, we have um, a mechanism by which we sit with them and look at all of the inputs to bring the, the, the product into this country and based on all of that, also noting the exchange rate. I mean, I, I think this is one thing which we've taken and what is happening with the exchange rate is really purely because you've seen how the, the US dollar is appreciating against every other currency. So when we take a look at all of that, you realize that um, while we are monitoring all of what is happening, and I'm, I can tell you, even the importers are under tremendous stress. We've seen what happened in, 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 in Ghana, we've seen what is happening in other countries. I mean, with all these events, we've seen how businesses have even lost their capitals, you know, and their inability to be able to continue with businesses. So for them also, it's really very um, strenuous. So, and if you take a look at the commodities that we have reduced those taxes for, these are, those are under our radar. We're looking at not only um, the prices, we're looking at even the quality. We want to make sure that consumers are having value for money. And in fact, part of that thinking was even what led to us passing the consumer protection law. And we're looking at the rollout of the commission this year, which is going to bring in another layer of monitoring of prices. We've seen also that even with petroleum products, we have a pricing formula. And all of what is inputted into what comes with the petroleum products here is actually part of the pricing formula. And from time to time, we've seen how the prices, have, the pump prices have been going up. And when we see that the, the, those inputs are coming down and they are impacting on the, 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 the pump price, we, we see the need to bring them down. I think under this regime we've seen those alterations, particularly downward movement, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So it's clear reflection of what the government really feels about how the consumers are, I mean, the, the, the constraints the consumers are going through at these very difficult times, and of course all of us are part of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think um, the Ministry of Trade will sit by and take a look at um, importers having more money at this time. I, this is not. Um, a jungle, jungle fair. We were very, very concerned about that. And even the very importers, the very businesses also know that when all of these things are happening, it's impacting their businesses. Um, there is a possibility that um, they could even lose market shares if the prices continue to go. Because no matter what, if these prices continue to go up, 
there's going to come a time when the consumer too will say, okay, well, you know, we can go without, mm -hmm. or we can even cut down on what we are consuming. So all of those things are really noted, and we are behind them. We, they are under tremendous stress, just like our, we are, just like the consumers too, uh, too are. But at the end of the day, what we're making sure happens is there is fairness. There is there is fairness in how the price and are thrown. There is fairness um, in how the consumer also um, should be able to pay and get the value for what it's paying for. So all of those things are at the back of the mind. It's not an easy task. It's really rigorous and going after all of the commodities sometimes can also be backbreaking, but we're still doing inflation it. Inflation is still very, according to the Bank of Salient Monetary Policy statement, um, in, in November, um, <coughs> it was 29.38%. Um, the exchange rate, the, the only still, um, you know, depreciating to the, the US dollar. Um, you know, it is expected that the ministry and ministries like finance and the Bank of Salient are uh, institutions or government agencies that could collaborate. Um, <coughs> How are some of the policies uh, by these institutions helping your work, or are they making your, your work more difficult? Even when you review prices, you cut down taxes, things are still high. The inflation is still high. We're working together. I mean, we're, we're part of the Economic Management Committee at that level. We're also part of the Essential Goods and Services Committee. I mean, uh, as part of what everybody had seen at the economic level, we realized that um, setting up the Essential Goods and Services Committee would only make sense because it would draw um, the knowledge, the expertise of a number of people who are in government to come sit down and take a look at the challenges, particularly at a, at a moment like this, when bigger economies that were doing very, very well, Ghana was at one time looked at as the jewel, the, the jewel in Africa. Today, it has gone down in a way that nobody, even Nigeria, I mean, there are certain things which we are able to do that some of those countries are not able to do, and it's impacting their economies. I mean, the fact that Nigeria even stopped paying their, their, I mean, their, their, their debts is a clear indication that things are really very, very tough all around us. Mm -hmm. And take a look at what is happening in other countries, you will also see that it's difficult. And it's within this that we're trying to see how much we can do. But some of the things which we've been able to do is actually paying attention around how we can boost our exports mm. and making sure that the, the proceeds that come from those exports return to Sierra Leone. Because it's only when you're able to get more foreign currency flowing in that you're able to have um, the, the supply to the market also um, happening seamlessly. Are the companies putting more pressure on governments? According to the Bank of Salyun, um the gross decline in their international reserves is partly due to the special credit facility that they created to support private sector for the importation of essential goods, including food and fuel, as well as the payments of external debts. But the money we're giving to these companies, you know, this, um, the Bank of Salyun is doing, is it putting more pressure on what we could have spent or have more resources spending in other areas than providing these facilities for them? Under these circumstances, everything puts pressure on the economy. I mean, we, we could not have um, be constrained to support the private sector to bring in those essential commodities. Why? Because the risk of us running um, a market without goods, especially the essential goods, was, was heavily there. I mean, we saw what happened in, in Liberia very recently when they ran out of rice, and rice was taken, I mean, within the, 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 the constraints that we have, rice was taken out of Sierra Leone to, to Liberia. We didn't want that kind of thing to happen. I mean, in spite of all the challenges, and you've seen how we've been able to ensure that those support that were given to the private sector was able to um, stockpile enough essential commodities, and you've seen how that has driven us through. I mean, they look at what happened. Um, well, that is reserve, to, it's, it's reducing our reserve as well. The Bank of Sierra is I saying that. I agree. It's reducing our reserve. But what do you need to have a reserve when um, your people are, are dying? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to actually keep money and your, your children at home are not able to, to feed? They are not mm -hmm. able to, to dress or... I mean, at least some of the basic things, and that's why the focus here has been on essential commodities. 
So all of the support that we've been providing has been towards making sure we're able to stockpile those essential commodities. And that we succeeded in doing. And I'm sure that is why you can even see that even as prices are going up, they're still stable. And I mean, you've not found yourself. Take a look at what happened towards the end of um, um, the year when there was the slight shortage of petroleum products. I mean, there was some logistic problems. The product was supposed to be here. There was a delay with the ship coming, and then there was a two or three days um, delay. Imagine what happened. Petroleum products that were sell, sold at um, the normal pump price at 21. People were selling it at 45, 50. Uh, and, and I asked the president about that, the interview I had with him, and he said, we're under this pressure of providing <coughs> forex every other time the oil marketing companies want to go and buy their, their fuel. We, we have to help find foreign exchange for them to be able to pay for this fuel. How long will we be doing that? I mean, it's something which I think um, under these circumstances we need to do, but um, we've found ways around it. Um, for instance, we have the other big consumers of products like the mining companies and some of these other big companies. I mean, and some of them um, trade with, in Forex. So one rational way we have decided to do is to let those companies, especially that are exporting the products and they're getting Forex um, in, the, in, the, in the trade, to also be buying petroleum products in, in, in US dollars and Sierra Leone, and that's working. So you see, that's one way we've, we've, we've taken some of the burden away from government. Mm -hmm. And um, if, the petrol, if the mining companies, for instance, are using almost 50% of diesel that comes into the country, and you want to put all of that burden on the government of Sierra Leone, I think it will be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is to create this arrangement that um, products that are going to some of these companies are actually sold in US dollars and they have to pay the equivalent in US dollars. So I think that's helping also, it's helping to ease up. I mean, it's all part of us coming together, looking at all possibilities of dealing with a very complex situation. And I think some of those interventions are helping. Uh, with all the activities and interventions, we still have inflation on an upward trend and the Leon's <coughs> depreciating against the US dollar and other currencies is still a concern. What's the plan of the ministry and other MDAs that the ministry work with in addressing inflation, especially with the Leon as well? So um, there are a couple of things that you're looking at here. Um, I told you that when we took over, Ministry of Trade was in fact, most people did not even call industry. There was very little emphasis placed on manufacturing in this country. In fact, you, you listen to the president address for the very first time in parliament. He said that um, manufacturing was contributing very meagerly to, to um, GDP. We, when we came, we have looked at all of those, and you've seen how we brought investment into manufacturing. And a number of them, I will not make mention, but, but you have a huge number of manufacturing now going on in Sierra Leone. And what we've tried to do, we worked with exports, countries that have been able to roll out policies like the special economic zone. Mm. We've reviewed the industry policy. We're doing all of this because there is need for us to beef up what is happening with our manufacturing. Most of what we produce in Sierra Leone actually goes out as raw material. We're actually feeding other manufacturers. And if you take a look at what we've been losing, it's not just the, 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 the extra tax that we'll get when manufacturing happens, even the jobs. We find ourselves in an economy where we've, we've so much put so much pressure on the government to do most of the employment. It should not happen like that. We should have the private sector. And you only can do that when you're able to come up with those policies that would drive private sector investment and manufacturing in one such area. So, um, the agreements we've been signing, I mean, recently you just mentioned, we signed three agreements with cement factories that are coming to set up grinding mills in this country. One will be in Waterloo, another will, the other two will be in Freetown here. One other existing one is going to, to Hastings. You see, all of those are actually going to help to reduce the pressure that we have on even the, the forex demand to import cement into this mm. country. And the other good thing here is 
30% of the raw material that's going to be used in the production of cement is actually going to be got in Sierra Leone. I mean, our granite dust, the, the, the basalt dust that we, we get from what they call ironstone locally, mm. is actually 30% of what is used to make the cement is actually that granite dust. Mm. So if you're going to have all these factories set up, and they're going to be using those raw materials. You see how much multiplier effect it's going to have on manufacture, sorry, on, on employment. But, but how do we ensure that, um, you know, we, we already produce oil, cooking oil, and other commodities in the country, um, some of them. How do we ensure that the prices of these things we produce here, the prices are less than what is imported? Because oh, that's, that's true. Yes. It, it's because we're producing vegetable oil that within the sub-region, Sierra Leone is selling vegetable oil at the lowest price. Okay. That is why Senegal, <clears throat> um, the Gambia, mm -hmm. Ivory Coast, Guinea mm -hmm. are buying the vegetable oil in Sierra Leone. Uh, exactly. Nobody that would have bought that vegetable oil in Sierra Leone if it was more expensive than what they so, had. So that is what I'm asking. Sometimes the, the traders exploit the markets. They, there are times they will tell you, even when they produce here, they, they pay less for things. They will tell you the exchange rate is still high. They peg everything to the dollars or what they pay for other things. But, how, but, how do you ensure as a ministry that as you push to have industries here to make things easier for people, the prices go down. We are not complacent at all. We are looking at all of them. I mean, what is the need for you to go plant the trees and you leave the fruits in the hands of thieves? We're making sure, I mean, everywhere in the world you have rogue businesses. We, we fully understand that and that's why we're not just leaving them, we're not just leaving the consumer in their hands. That's why our, we have all these regulators. Every week we sit on the prices of these commodities. We input everything, whatever it takes to bring those commodities in this country and see that whatever price that is out there is reflective of what is that is about bringing those commodities into this country. So, I mean, and even the effort of us setting up the, the Consumer Protection Commission, it's a law that's even going to bite even harder because here it's going to be the consumers themselves we're going to have representative of the consumers going out there with the authority, the check, the quality. I mean, all those incidences. I mean, we have institutions like Standards Bureau um, and, and, and some others that have been looking at what happens in the market. But with the consumer protection, we're going to have stronger representation of the consumer themselves going out there looking at what is happening with a strong mandate from the law. Mm -hmm. And if there is any violation the other day, um, and if you take a look at all those old laws, fines which are imposed are very, very minimal. And I mean, it's not even a disincentive for some of these businesses to commit a crime. Imagine somebody is so bold to commit a crime, they go to the court, they find them, and they walk out. They commit the crime again. But what we have in the consumer protection law is so strong that anybody who attempts doing anything out of the, the way is going to be beaten by the consumer law. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the commission we're putting up, I think um, by j this January going into February, would have put up, would have been able to set up the institution. I think it's going to ha add another layer mm -hmm. to what is really happening in the inner market. Mm -hmm. It's going to see what we do with um, um, trade happening even in the interior, because in most cases, some of what is happening in the interior can never happen in Freetown. So we want to see how we continue to do that. And the investment we're bringing in, the competition among those who are trading is also very, very vital. Because these days, everybody cares about their market share. Because you can only stay in, mark in the market when you have a very considerable market share. And that's where the profit margin is going to be. Now you're going to see people now trading at scale. Nobody's wanting to go bring um, small products. Now people are bringing in shiploads of, I mean, it's the first time you're seeing that. A company coming in with a whole shipload. It used to be two, three, four companies coming together to bring one shipload of cement. Today, one company is bringing a whole shipload of cement. And you also know that if you cannot sell very quick, your cement is going to go bad. So all of that put together, the competition, the strain on them, is going to see how they also look at what is happening. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you've seen how the prices, I mean, with the competition is helping with cement. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have cement trading at um, 135 wholesale yeah. price. Now it's gone down to 125 just mm -hmm. because we've seen all these. I mean, just when we, we do the signature, 
on the agreements. Everybody, those who are in the market already start feeling the pressure that, oh, more players are coming. And so there is need for us to see what we do with our pricing, um, even put down our, our profit margin to be able to gain more uh, market share. So with the competition, I think we're going to see a whole lot happening. With a plan and projection of the ministry, uh, informed by the short term <coughs> and the long term plan, what's the duration for significant impact to be felt in the market by consumers? We, we are not slipping. I mean, like I told you, um, there are various other factors that actually determine the price of commodities in the market. Take a look at what is happening. We, even with cement, in Guinea today, um, a bag of cement, the wholesale price is $8. I mean, converting $8 into Lyon is about 150 something thousand. Sorry, yes, 150 something thousand. You go to Liberia, it's about $8.20. So if you take a look at what is happening in Sierra Leone, if we're buying the wholesale at 125, it tells you a whole lot that there are so many things that we're doing differently than those other countries. Um, you've seen how Guinea too has tried to restrict what is happening even at their, at their entry, border entry points. And we too are looking at those progressive reforms. I mean, there are a couple of things. Our dependence on um, what is coming here, I mean, should be able, we should be able to offset that with how much we are also selling out to other countries. And so this whole idea of doing value addition, I mean, you have a good number of company, or com companies now that are actually exporting high-value-ended commodities to other countries. The whole idea of even introducing the export zones, the agro-processing zones, the special economic zone is actually um, a broader policy that looks at addressing some of those issues. Mm -hmm. And I want to believe with the new markets coming, it will be disingenuous if we just sit by and look at, oh, you have the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme that mm -hmm. allows us to be able to export to other ECOWAS countries duty-free, or do, with some we, we just stopped exporting rice to Liberia. <laughs> but we are not producing rice. That's the bottom but line. The minister says the minister of agriculture has been saying there has been growth, there has been increase in, in, in rice production in the country. You want to look at how much? I mean, take a look at the data. We have made considerable um, progress with local rice production. I mean, because the local rice has so much value, but it has not been very significant to stop importation of rice. We mm -hmm. still import rice. I mean, what we've not been able to do with vegetable oil is amazing. We've stopped importing um, vegetable uh, oil for too many reasons. Mm -hmm. One, it's not even competitive for you to go buy vegetable oil from other countries to bring to sale. And if you come, you'll not be able to sell it here. You cannot compete with the local producers. So you see, that's where we really want to, to take um, um, what we're doing. And we, what you're hearing from His Excellency the President, the emphasis to now start looking at agriculture, I mean the entire human capital development project that he is pushing. I mean we've succeeded with, we're, we're getting to what we needed to, to do with education. I mean the next thing is looking at health um, and food security. I'm very, very sure with all of the interventions that's going to come in agricultural productivity. And it's also good for us because the more we are able to produce, the diverse agricultural produce we are able to do in this country, the more industries that will come in to do the value addition. Mm. Today, Coca-Cola that ran away is back. Okay. I mean, nobody in, in its sense will look at an economy that's doing, I mean, with the, the, the business environment that we've been able to enhance. Now businesses come, no pressure is on them to give monies to government officials so that they're able to establish their business. I think that's one big success this government has been able to do. Okay. And once you're able to enhance that environment, you create the confidence in the private sector to come and invest, then you're going to see um, the, 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 the manufacturing sector flourishing. But let's take some few messages, Phoebe, I think. We've got um, loads of them. I don't know if you have some there. We need to take some of them um, to have the minister respond to them because this is about bread and butter issue. <laughs> uh, the first one I'll take is, um, is, it says, please ask the minister what's going to be the roles and responsibility of the newly recruited trade officers at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Are they going to be posted at district level? Uh, gonna please continue. Musa Alassan Kamal says, Mr. Sandi, you need to be robust in monitoring the traders, especially in the provincial areas. 
in order to ease the burden on consumers, you have to cut down the taxes drastically and stop the double standard. Um, Mohamed Touré says, your ministry is the most collapsed ministry in the country. Every day, inflation of prices, there is no control. So what exactly are you working on as a minister to address these issues? And um, Daniel Sherif says, ask yourself the simple question. Do you think the minister is happy with the increments in commodities? Don't you think he wants to score better so that the president can have an easy ride in his political strides? And Abdul Koma is saying, Mr. Minister, how much do you monitor the markets as an individual and personally go to market places to ask for prices? Every day we wake and sleep, uh, things go up drastically and no one is addressing that. I'll take one more, then we go to the minister. The minister actually has to leave us before um, nine o'clock. So um, Yusuf Fofana says another depreciation of the uh, another problem of the depreciation of the Leons is the uh, president who always take huge junk of dollars out of the country for his overseas traveling. Jeremiah Fire Musa says, can all these plans of, uh, be accomplished in just two months? Because I'm sure the ministers, all ministers have few months to elections. <laughs> That's a question the minister will answer. Um, Simba Kul says, the investments we are bringing tells us something new. So we are now importing more instead of exporting. Someone is asking. Mr. Minister, maybe you want to respond to some of this. Well, we just recruited some trade officers. Um, if there was the means within the, the, the limited um, resources that we have, we'd want to have more so that we deploy um, trade officers in every part of the country. But, I mean, within the limited resources, we've just got some, and those are going to be deployed to the provinces. Um, they're going, I mean, we've already set um, an in, um, induction um, training for them so that they know exactly what they're going to be doing there. The, the bottom line is they're going to add to the monitoring um, efforts of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Um, we are, of course, monitoring the, the, the market. I mean, there are videos of me and my deputy minister in the market. Mm. I'm engaging businesses. Um, looking at what is happening in the petroleum sector with iron rolls, with rice, I mean, uh, and the, the kind of engagement we've had with the businesses. It's not one that will look at threatening anybody to get out of the market, but it's been one of constructive um, 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 approach so that they also see themselves as um, being part of the market and the competitiveness that we're bringing in also is all part of what is going to help ease of some of the trouble that we're having with increase in prices. Um, you want to ask, I mean, I think all ministers of trade or secretaries of commerce around the, the world are under this same pressure. If you go, I mean, we just came from Agoa, you saw the, 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 the tremendous pressure that is upon the, 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 the secretary of commerce there. I mean, you have in instances where some supermarkets even run dry without commodities. I mean, those are all some of the challenges. And the prices are also going up. You want to also do the same for, for, for the UK. You saw how a whole government um, only lasted for a few weeks mm. after their, their appointment. I mean, it all shows how difficult the economic um, situation is globally. Um, the, 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 the prices are going up as well in, in the UK. The, the UK pound is also um, depreciating against the US dollar. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the UK pound and the euros are depreciating against the dollar, I mean, just because the United States took one decision to increase interest rates, and we all know what ramifications that are. I mean, it's all part of the global discussions around how we can help to ease up some of these economic challenges. I mean, I'm very, very sure um, every minister of trade is actually going through a whole bundle of... Are you under pressure? Well, of course. I mean, it's just the, the, the manner in which you've been able to adapt and be able to deal with all of these issues.
I mean, if, if you're looking at what is happening with petroleum prices, you're looking at how you increase exports, you're looking at how you talk with businesses to come into this country, you're going on, on some of these um, trade missions. The U.S.-Africa Leadership Summit was one very big success. We were able to talk with a number of businesses. We were looking at what we can do with AGOA. We're looking at how we convince the United States to extend AGOA. We're looking at how we engage our local businesses, particularly the small and medium enterprises, to be able to produce and target the U.S. markets, engaging so many other countries, working with the WTO to look at some of the issues around trade globally. I think one would say that, I mean, you are on a whole bunch of pressure, but the manner in which you are able to um, plan yourself, the, 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 the fact that, first of all, you accept that the work that you're doing is challenging. I mean, to me, um, it's one of the um, best ways you can actually navigate on the um, oh, we know you're about to leave uh, the studio to catch up with other uh, ministerial activities, but um, we have a team out at Congo Market. Uh, our camera operator, Ransford Wright, and our reporter, Anna Yangsen, are there right now to give us market updates. Uh, would like for you to sit and, you know, just follow up on that update and quickly respond to it before you leave. Let's head to Congo Market now and join Anna Yangsen. All right, so we are live here at the Congo market to get the views of traders in the market in regards to the to the increase of prices in the market. So I have with me a woman standing here. So what's your name, ma? Mabinti Samoa. Okay, mom. And so um, tell me about how the goods then you go in the market. It's not really easy now. Wait till me the big for tell Papa government. Let it pray. He ask God for indirection. Mm -hmm. It's not really easy. Let God direct them out for holy station. Okay. Nobody not go to do them, only God. This dollar business, it affects every side. Every day price just they go up. Mm -hmm. Which you go buy today, not to you go buy tomorrow. All right. So almost you they buy then things they already sell. More take the banana, for example. Almost you, you go sometimes today, you go buy them um, for 5,000. Sometimes the next day, you go to go say, say three. The other ten we go go say say five ten thousand. So price it, it, it change every. So if you buy a five ten thousand, how much did you sell her? So I will sell her three ten thousand. I will sell her four because you got a pool rate you don't pay. Say for carry time. All right. Okay. So um, thank you very much. As we don't get the view from um, from um, instead they buy the things them Sunday three for. 10,000, sometimes 5 or 10,000, but with the gold on right now inside the market, but know exactly how other people that they sell the market and also if the price they affect them now, the country. As we know, say this now, New Year, and so many things that they go on, and people them, they do their own reports them and they talk about how the price don't they affect them. So, and in say where the dollar don't go up right now, the dollar don't make the price don't go up now the, 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 the market. So, okay, I see. Um, a woman here, so where they sell baby stuff them, you get pampas and other stuff. Hello, ma, what's in your name? My name is Madam Jalo. Okay, Madam Jalo. All right, so tell me how um, the price control they affect your business. That's not the business, no easy. All things on there. What you will to buy it now? All things on there. Rice and pampas to the barn. This will be the barn. 150 now, the barn. 170, 160. Now the pampas and on there. All, right. All the things they want, they buy trash. And they want more money, they buy Boku Bona. If you know Boku money, you go now, stop or buy. Okay. You know they so, what's your expectation this year? This year? Mm. What are you this year? What do you expect for the price then? For them, they are, we don't go up. Ah, right now, all things don't go up. The price they don't go up. Right now, all things don't go up. So, how much did they sell one Pampas? One Pampas? One Green Pampas? Okay, one. 2000. So, how much That's a live update. Uh, they're still there at Congo Market. Uh, what would be your response to, especially those two women, who were very, uh, very blunt with you know the situation and their expectation? So you've seen how um, all of this is happening. It's playing out with other small businesses. Um, it's not easy when the importers bring these commodities and you you see that first maybe the price is fair 
they're buying it from as Ghana because this is happening in every other country and then once it's brought here you see that the exchange rate also is impacting the prices you expect you expect um, the prices to be to be a little bit up you know remember he said he used to sell three pampas for five thousand yeah. today he's selling one for two thousand mm -hmm. meaning the three is now going for six thousand mm -hmm. you 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 see that all of those marginal price increases are actually as a result of all what we find ourselves in um, you, I, I was in Accra the other day and a bunch of businesses the same problems they are raising here is that they're running out of capital I mean what you used to buy the 10 million loans you used to buy all your market on your table can no longer buy the same market and when all of these things happen at the global level and Sierra Leone is not that insulated we are not we don't even have a pampas factory in this country you see all we have the raw materials even because it's one thing to have the factories it's another thing to be able to produce the raw materials in your country and have some edge over other producers so but when once you have all of these things i mean it's i mean it, it bothers me as a minister of trade because um we we have to um look at how it's impacting um life i mean the, the livelihood of our people but in a circumstance like this, we can only encourage them. And we're also looking forward that 2023 is going to be one that will be a difference. Some of all the global challenges we've been having, the logistics challenges, um, the war in Ukraine, although it's taking different turns, mm -hmm. we're hoping that the world qualities come around how we can deal with some of these challenges so that um, the impact on them will, will not be that much. Um, part of the engagement which Africa, the AU is having, even with the Western world, the, 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 the G20 and the likes, is for us to look at, I mean, they're taking the decision to put a cap on how much um, the, the, they can buy the Russian oil. And as they do that, Russia is also saying, well, once you put a cap on us, we are not going to sell to you. Talking about oil, I want to ask you quickly before we let you go about the oil petroleum company. You know, this, this was a um, company, I remember the president went, it was launched, and they are, you know, the hope was there that it will address some of the challenges. What's, what's their status present? They have completed the, the facility. They've done the renovation on the, on the tanks. And because of that, we have been able to double the capacity of oil that we can hold. Are they this. operating? They are operating. Although at a very, very low scale, after inputting all that huge investment in rehabilitating the tanks and, and also doing this jetty, that was another very big achievement. I mean, it used to be only one jetty. So even when two boats come, they can only do it one at a time. And all of that was adding even to demorage. Now two boats can come and discharge at the same time. Mm -hmm. So those are all big achievements we've made. There is some issue around um, the, the, their capital also to be able to actually start doing business. I mean, at very, very large scale. They're doing it at very, very small scale and they're even providing the tanks. That's the other good thing. They're providing the tanks, a storage facility for other companies. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we're only looking at how we can support them. We've introduced them to Afrexin Bank to support them with the financing. And I'm sure the, the discussion with the Afrexin Bank is progressing very well. Um, we're hoping that in the next couple of months, they should be able to get back to their feet and be, be able to... I mean, the, the company was put together by one Sierra Leonean and another Nigerian. And they, although um, they've done very well, but you know, in a, in a challenging moment like this, interest rates going up, mm -hmm. getting loans can be also very challenging. I, but I'm sure... They should be able to get something from us. Mr. Minister, you heard from that lady, you know, she, she came back to Papa government and she's saying the government needs to pay for direction. I, I, we really want you to speak to Sierra Leoneans um, who wake every morning and their earning is still low and when they go to the market, they find it difficult <coughs> to get their, their, their daily, um, you, you know, uh, things that will sustain them. Speak to them, please. This is the resilience. I mean... I have been talking about um, that we all have as Sierra Leoneans. We've gone through very difficult moments. 
Um, we, we, we may not want to be in difficult moments all the time, but it happens. And when you see this happening, and it's not a result of any fault of the government, it's a global crisis. I mean, you're seeing how much all other countries are actually struggling dealing with all of the challenges. I'm sure it calls for all of us to start looking at things differently. Let's take a look at what we can do locally. Let's see how we put more investment into agriculture. Let's start producing for ourselves. We have um, companies that are here to do flour, and they have commitment to be inputting cassava as well as sweet potato in the flour production. How would they be able to do that? They can only do that if we're able to produce enough cassava. You've seen how the revolution um, of um, Sarah uh, Gary, Sarah Bo Gary, they came in, they invested so much, close to a million plus dollars. And today, just the packaging of Sarah Bo Gary makes it very, very attractive. It's now sold on the, on the, on the markets in other countries. If you take a look at what is happening in Sumbuya, and this is all a result of actually what we've tried to do as government, even in these challenging moments. Mm. Pineapple juice is now produced and sold to Europe. Mm. The beets is now sold to the United States. And uh, there is a whole um, pizza company that's, that has shown strong interest in the pineapple because the pineapple we're producing there in Sumbuya is among the best in the whole world. So you will see that all of these things that we're doing are going to add up. But we all, as Sierra Leoneans, need to come together. Because the way things are playing out, governments and citizens, countries, nations, really need to see what efforts they can make to increase their productivity. You, you are the Minister of the Bread. I would say the bread and butter issue is under your poor view. Um, quickly, um, what's the status of, uh, can we call as well, the President launched a bakery project or so in the East of Italy? And what the, uh, the, the, the status of that? So it's true. We met um, Sierra Leone flour made dead. We've revitalized it. We did an agreement with them. Today, Sierra Leone flour mill is putting up a number of silos and they're bringing in a new flour mill. Um, Sonoko is also putting up their flour mill um, somewhere around um, um, Klein Town. Yeah. And they've worked on the, the bakery equipment. In fact, it's going to be the first in, 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 in the Mano River Union to be producing bakery equipment. The, 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 um, the equipment that is going to be used to be making bread and all of those confectionery products. So I want to believe um, the challenges were there. I mean, COVID came, it disrupted even the movement of people. Um, the one that was to happen at Wellington, um, the, the experts were supposed to have come from Turkey. There was COVID, they could not come, but now they're here. They've gone very, very far with the construction. I want to believe some of this capital investment takes time, but once they're completed, they should have impact. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. We know you have to rush to other um, person um, work you have to do, but thanks very much for joining us this morning. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you again some other time to discuss further. Thank you very much. He's the Minister of Trade and Industry, Dr. Inga Sandin.